Hey guys, it's Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching as always. Today we have another episode of Space Industry Updates where I take you through all the latest news for publicly traded space companies and the biggest moves in the space industry. We have a lot of exciting updates today, including a bunch of mergers and acquisitions going on, so many everywhere right now. Uh, some updates from Spire, Planet Labs, Rocket Lab, and many more. Before we get to that, I hope you will consider subscribing if you find this kind of content interesting. Every subscriber really helps out so much. And thank you as well to my channel members for continuing to support the content. Also, thank you so much to our newest channel member, Bray. Thank you for joining the team. It is much appreciated. Let me know if there's any more perks you would like as a channel member, because I'm definitely open to some new ideas on that front. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right into space industry updates. So starting off, before we get into Rocket Lab, we do have some news in the Earth observation space. There's been a lot going on lately, especially for Spire Global, a company I don't tend to talk about too much, but they did have their quarterly results just recently, and the stock has gone ballistic. Um, the big news is that they are expected to be free cash flow positive by the summer of 2024, hitting a lot of milestones on their way to profitability, and the company is doing extremely well. Well, now if we check the chart quickly and we can look at them versus their peers in the Earth observation space, thinking about black sky and planet, who are also kind of playing in the in the same area, a little bit different, but um, all three are, of course, looking at the Earth. We can see in red here that Spire has had an absolutely amazing run over the past year up exactly 69%. You would love to see that. <laughs> and uh, we, it, down in negative 15%, we have Black Sky all the way down at negative 51% for the year is Planet Labs. And I'm hearing we do have a special message from Spire Global to their competitors. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. <laughs> uh, I do have to admit, I borrowed that meme from Space Case Taylor, who runs a great space investor newsletter. If you're interested in signing up, you can just search for him on Twitter, and I'm sure you'll find him. He has a, a lot of interesting tweets as well. So yeah, needless to say, great run for Spire, and they seem to be in the lead at least right now when it comes to Earth observation. Planet Labs did have some news of their own though recently. They did announce that they were awarded a seven-figure contract by the Naval Information Warfare Center for vessel detection and monitoring over key areas of interest throughout the Pacific. This seven-finger contract could be anywhere from $1 million to $9.9 .9 million, I suppose. So we don't have a you know firm figure. It's a nice contract. It's not what I would call like a massive earth shattering, but all of these are obviously nice for Planet Labs to keep growing. Okay, on to Rocket Lab. We always seem to have lots of updates for them, and this week is no different. They did announce that they're partnering with Viasat to showcase on-demand low-latency data relay services for low-Earth observation satellites. So Rocket Lab will support Viasat's hybrid space communications networks demonstrations by producing a spacecraft bus and providing mission operation support. The demonstrations are part of Viasat's work across two awards, totaling 80 million under NASA's communications services project. So, um, yet another good contract for Rocket Lab's space systems division. They continue to execute and really drive the growth for the company, at least over the short term, until Neutron does get online. Rocket Lab will provide the power, communications, propulsion, and adequate and attitude control for the mission demonstration. They will incorporate their own satellite components and subsystems into the spacecraft, including star trackers, reaction wheels, solar panels, S-band radios, flight software, and ground software. Uh, continuing with Rocket Lab, they did tweet that final rehearsals were underway at LC1 and LC2, so that's Virginia and New Zealand four dedicated electron missions in March, the Owl Night Long mission for Cinespective, and Live and Let Fly for National Recon Office. 
Now, um, unfortunately, the Wise Owl knows to wait for optimal conditions, so there will be a delay they announced on this Cinespective launch. It's now going to happen uh, in terms of Pacific time or Eastern time on March 12th in the morning. So disappointing to see that delay, but I'm sure we'll get to see them launching again very soon, and I'll probably be having my coffee watching this one. Maybe we'll even do it live if anyone's interested in watching it with me. Uh, Rocket Lab got a separate contract for NASA. This involves their Haste system for Electron. Pretty small, not a huge deal. The total combined value was $45 million across many different com companies. So not a big deal for Rocket Lab, but of course every little bit helps. If it's Haste, I assume there's going to be a launch in here at some point because I don't know what else they'd be doing as a part of as a part of haste but uh, I guess we'll get more details later on it has to do with testing across suborbital rockets high altitude balloons Starship Flight 3 is going to be extremely exciting it's coming up soon and I can't wait to watch it Probably if you're watching this video, you're already aware of it and are interested in watching it as well. Uh, it's definitely going to be exciting no matter how it turns out. And it is planned for no earlier than March 14th, 2024. Uh, yeah, can't wait to see this one either. It's going to be an exciting event. Um, continuing on, uh, we have some M&A moves. We have some M&A news now from Terran Orbital. They were given a purchase offer from Lockheed Martin, who was trying to acquire them at $1 per share. Terran Orbital, the stock, has been in a decent amount of trouble over the past year or so. Uh, Lockheed did make that op offer to acquire them on Friday. Terran Orbital actually responded by adopting a poison pill, which is basically when... Uh, signaling they don't want to be acquired and they're taking measures to make sure Lockheed can't just acquire enough shares on the open markets to take over the company. Lockheed did note that their offer was a 38% premium to the 72 cent closing price on December 11th. Does seem to be a pretty fair offer overall, but yeah, clearly Terran Orbital management is not very interested in accepting. Uh, I wasn't shocked by this because Lockheed has done a fair bit of work with Terran in the past and given them contracts in the past. Lockheed, and this was in a little bit of an interesting bit here, Lockheed Martin noted in the acquisition proposal that they are Terran Orbital's largest revenue generating customer and the company is confident it will be, it will continue to be the largest revenue generating customer for Terran for the foreseeable future. So the interesting part about this is that Terran Orbital actually has another company called Rivada Space Networks, which has a $2.4 billion constellation deal, much more than they have contracted with Lockheed. But Rivada has continually delayed milestone payments, and there's been a lot of problems with this Rivada customer and Rivada payments. They finally did get a payment from Rivada recently, but Lockheed Martin making it pretty clear, it seems like in this offer that they don't consider Rivada to be like a real customer uh, delivering, you know, actual capital. So uh, I think Taryn probably disagrees with that assessment, but uh, interesting drama. Recently, Taryn has faced criticism for their backlog being too concentrated between Lockheed and Rivada, and they've also had a disgruntled group of shareholders call for the CEO to be replaced. So uh, Taryn did commit to an ongoing strategic review to maximize their shareholder value, but there's been tons of drama around this company lately as they've really struggled, and the stock price shows it sitting around that $1 mark. And after adopting this poison pill, Terran Orbital has actually been sued by some shareholders who presumably do want the acquisition to get, go through, and it sounds like there is some precedent for these lawsuits being successful. So it's definitely going to be interesting to follow the drama around Terran and see whether Lockheed does end up acquiring it. Um, yeah, the, the, the Terran Orbital saga does continue. 
Intuitive Machines, we got some pretty cool pictures since the last time I updated you guys about uh, the lander. You can see a broken landing leg here on Odysseus. And now Intuitive has announced the completion of the Odysseus science mission. Uh, they will no longer be transmitting any more data. They called it a successful February 22 soft landing on the South Pole region of the moon. I would call it maybe more of a hard landing, to be honest. And their CEO did say that following our unequivocal success, I'm emboldened for the future of the U.S. and international lunar economy and intuitive machines future as we believe we can win, execute, and pioneer the future of cis lunar market, which uh, I found kind of funny. I mean, how can you say it's unequivocal when the so many of those payloads weren't able to execute their missions. I would definitely call it equivocal success, <laughs> but uh, overall was pretty impressed with the team at Intuitive Machines. The stock did kind of reflect the wild ride it's been on, going all the way from the mid twos up to $10 plus per share. So a five X in very short order. Back down to around the $5 range, personally, I feel like it could fall further until we get that maybe next lander or something. But let me know how you guys are thinking about this stock, because it's one I'm a little bit more interested in these days. Although I feel like $5 per share is still too rich for my taste. So after Astra has lost over 99% of its value, the founders have now agreed with the board to purchase the company and take it private, meaning another acquisition here. This one, um, interesting story. I really thought there was no way out of this for quite a while now. The interesting thing about this is Kemp in London actually submitted an offer not too long ago to take them private at $1.50 per share. Now, the board never accepted that deal, and it was kind of just hanging there, and I kept wondering, what's going on with this deal? Why isn't it going through? Clearly, it's this or bankruptcy. Um, then, just a few weeks ago, Kemp in London reduced their offer by two-thirds. So their offer was then only 50 cents a share instead of $1.50. And at that point, the board accepted it. And I'm like, what are you doing? Where's your due diligence here? Like, if you're... If you think the 50 cent deal is the best option, then clearly that dollar 50 cent deal was the best option. Why did you not get that value for the shareholders? Why are shareholders now stuck with a 50 cent return? Uh, horrible, horrible uh, for shareholders as their value has absolutely been destroyed. Sorry for any former Astra shareholders watching. Um, yeah, just a, a tough go on this one. Really, really strange story, and it really just left me puzzled why yeah, that initial offer wasn't accepted for that higher purchase price. So, of course, all the commentary has been going online, talking about going from a $5.4 billion company to an $11 million company in three years. Uh, Astra, famously, everyone was saying going to the moon and really got caught up in the meme hype and all that kind of stuff back when it had absolutely no revenue. You can find some crazy slide decks out there, like where Astra saying they were going to launch 300 times a year and stuff like that. Clearly, that never got close to even happening, but... The saga has finally come to a close for now. I expect we won't be hearing very much from Kemp once Astra goes private, but maybe we'll see them launch that rocket 4.0 system at some point. You never know. Maybe he has some friends who can help with the funding, but this company, all sorts of trouble, and they could not raise capital on the public market. So this was it was either this or liquidation, in my opinion. So MDA, an interesting Canadian company dealing with satellite manufacturing, uh, have had a great few months here going from around $11 per share to almost $15 per share. It is actually a company I'm a pretty big fan of, not a shareholder at this point. They are already profitable, which is nice after seeing so many space SPACs that seem always two years out from profitability. Uh, nice to see one here that's already profitable. They have some news as well. They announced that they will be added to the S&P TSX Composite Index prior to the open of trading on March 18th, 2024. If you're not too familiar with the TSX Composite Index, you're probably not Canadian, so I don't blame you. Um, it's just the largest and most liquid publicly traded companies in Canada, representing the principal benchmark measure, measure for the Canadian equity market. 
market, something I'm very familiar with, of course. So congratulations on MDA for their inclusion in that TSX index, and hopefully that will add some more buyers and stability for the company as it will get held by you know larger institutions and funds and ETFs, things of that nature. So really MDA, a uh, great Canadian space company kind of hitting the more mainstream, at least in the Canadian stock markets. Black Sky, one of the imaging companies we did talk about previously, who is no longer the captain, <laughs> um, did win still a multi-million dollar contract in support of U.S. Department of Defense moving target study. So that's always good for Black Sky. The contract is to collect and annotate thousands of Black Sky multi-frame burst images to train moving target AI models for commercial motion imagery. So we don't have the exact numbers on this contract, only know it's multi million so I have to assume in the low millions but still a nice contract for Black Sky. Terran Orbital the one who was also dealing with the takeover drama did recently get a new contract themselves from the U.S. Space Force for 15.2 million dollars to supply ambassador class satellite platforms complete with solar arrays and support equipment to the Air Force Research Laboratory AFRL. Delivery is planned in the fourth quarter of 2024. And Iridium, things have not been looking too great for Iridium over the past year. They are a satellite constellation provider, communications, internet access, that kind of thing. Iridium is looking to do a acquisition of their own. They're looking to acquire Satels for secure PNT services. They announced the acquisition of leading provider for satellite-based time and location services. This service enhances the reliability and security of timing systems for digital infrastructure such as 5G base stations and data centers, safeguarding against vulnerabilities in GPS and other navigation systems. Iridium uh, did have some negative news lately. They were featured on the Barron Partners Fund report recently. The quote is, the negative news for Iridium Communications impacted its share price this quarter. The timeline for Iridium's direct-to-device offering has been prolonged. The company ended its exclusive relationship with Qualcomm and is now seeking other partners with whom to integrate its satellite direct-to-cellular chip. While this expands addressable customers, it has delayed the realization of revenue, other aspects of their business, anyway. Um, delays on direct to device and you know things not looking too great right now for Iridium's revenue numbers. So that's the news I have for you today. We have M&A everywhere. We have Blue Origin buying ULA soon. Lockheed trying to take over over Terran Orbital. We have Kemp in London buying Astra and taking it back private into stealth mode. And of course, Rocket Lab still looking to acquire some payload providers and things of that nature. So we'll have to wait and see when Rocket Lab does get in the game. Let me know what you thought of these updates. What are you looking forward to the most in the coming weeks? I suspect it might be either the Rocket Lab launches coming up or the big test flight for Starship. It's a very exciting time in the space industry and things are only going to get more exciting as the year goes on and we get closer and closer to neutron launches. Progress from Blue Origin as well as Relativity and many others. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tell me in the comments below any stories I missed and you would have liked to see covered. And I'll be sure to do my best to keep an eye on those. I hope you have a great day, a great weekend. And if you did enjoy this video, please do consider subscribing. It helps so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.